everyone. Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about queue implementation using linked list. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technology. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological advancements, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. At first, we will quickly revisit the queue functionalities that we have covered in previous sessions. Followed by that, we will understand the need for linked list implementation of queue. Advancing ahead, we will deal with representation of queue using linked list and the challenges that occurs while implementing queue using linked list. Finally, we will cover the coding implementation of queue data structure. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with our first topic which is quick recap on queue functionalities. Queue as we know from our previous discussions is a structure in which whatever goes in first comes out first. For example, customer service queue. In a customer service queue, the customer who enters first will leave the billing line first and the customer who enters last will definitely get served at last. This scenario for insertion and deletion is also known as first in first out principle. Moving ahead, let's discuss some features of this queue data structure. Basically, queue is a linear data structure that follows certain restrictions on insertion and deletion. The insertion can only be made from one end and deletion can only be performed from another end. Further, deletion is called as DQ and insertion is called as NQ. Along with these two primary queue operations, there exist three more supportive queue operations named as peak, is full and is empty. Peak operation should simply return the element at the front without removing it from list. And is full and is empty operation should return the state of queue that is empty or full. All these discussed operation must take a constant execution time. By that, what I mean is the time complexity for all these operations should be big O of 1. Now moving ahead, we shall understand the need for linked list implementation of queue. When we discuss the implementation of queue using arrays, we discuss the limitation of fixed size. According to that limitation, an array will always have a fixed size and it should be declared before the compilation of program. Furthermore, once all the positions in an array are taken or it is exhausted, then we only have two options. We can either deny insertion by saying that the queue is full and we cannot insert anything now. Or what we can do is we can create a new larger array and copy elements from the previous array to the new larger array. The time complexity for this copy operation will be proportional to the number of elements inside field array. In other words, we can say that the time complexity of this copy operation will be big O of n. But again, as we are giving random larger size to the array, there is a possibility of massive memory loss. Like, Right now in this array 70% of the memory is unused and the memory is a crucial resource that we should always be protecting. It's not that some amount of unused memory will be a real problem in today's modern day computer. But it's just that while designing solutions and algorithms, we should always analyze and understand these implications regarding memory. Along with this memory wastage, there exists another sort of memory management issue that occurs while utilizing an array to implement a queue data structure. The space of an array which is used to store elements can never be reused to store the queue elements because items can only be inserted from the front end and the front end's value may be so high at that time the space before the pointer will be lost for eternity. Let's have a look at an example to understand this drawback more clearly. In this example of array representation of queue, a queue of size 10 having 5 elements is shown. The value of the front pointer is 5. Therefore, we cannot reinsert values in the place of already deleted elements before the position of front. That means the space of the array before front pointer can never be reused for storage purpose. These drawbacks represent the need for a more appropriate method to implement queues. And by using a proper dynamic data structure like linked list, these drawbacks can be easily removed. On that note, let's discuss about the representation of queue using a linked list. A linked list, as we know, is a collection of data elements that we call nodes. These nodes are stored at non-contiguous locations in memory. Further, 
each node contains two fields one to store data and another to store the address of next field or the reference to the next node. Let's assume that the node in this figure are at addresses 200, 400 and 500 respectively. I have filled these addresses in the address field as well. The identity of the linked list that we always keep with us is address of the head node. We often name a pointer or reference variable at which we store the address as head. So now we are saying that we want to use a linked list to implement queue data structure and the basic definition of queue conveys that a queue is a linear data structure in which insertion is performed at the rear node and deletion at the front node. It's really effortless to enforce this property of a queue in linked list. We can simply pick one side of a linked list for insertion and another side for deletion. If the head node is considered to be front then the tail node will be the rear. Otherwise, if the head node is deemed to be the rear, then the tail node will be the front end. Whatever side we are picking for whatever operation, we just need to make sure one thing. And that thing is, the operations that we are carrying out must take a constant time. Or in other words, that time complexity should be big of 1. I hope that you guys are clear with the representation of a linked list as a queue data structure. Now moving forward, we will discuss about its implementation. But before that, let's have a look at the time complexity management challenge which occurs in queue implementation of a linked list. In the case of linked list, the cost for insertion or removal from the head side is big of 1. But the cost for insertion or removal from the tail side is big of n. So here is the deal. In a standard implementation of queue using linked list, if we insert element at one side and remove them from other side, then one of these operation nq or dq depending on how we are picking this side will cost us big of n. But the requirement that we have specified before for queue implementation suggests that both these operations must take a constant time. So we'll definitely need to do something to ensure that both nq and dq operations take constant time. Let's call this side front and this side rear. So I want to enqueue a node from the tail side and I want to perform a DQ at the head side. We are good for DQ operation because removal from the front will take a constant time. But insertion or NQ operation will be costing us big of N. Let's first see why insertion at the tail will be costlier. And then maybe we can try to do something. To insert an element at the rear end, what we will have to do is, first we will have to create a node. Let's say I got this node at address 350 and the integer that I want to enqueue is 7. The address part of this node can be set as null. Now we have to build a link with this created new node. And to do that, first we'll set the address part of the last node as the address part of this newly created node. But the only identity that we always keep with us in case of link list is address part of head node. So to get appointed to any other node, we need to start at head. That is why First, we'll create a pointer variable temp and we'll initially set it to head node. And now using this temp pointer, we'll traverse to the end of our linked list that is the tail node. And here, using this pointer temp, we can write the address part of the newly created node at the previous tail node to build this new link. This traversal of pointer from head to tail is taking all the time for insertion. We use a statement like temp is equal to temp.next to move the next node. What we can do is we can avoid this whole traversal with the help of pointer variable just like head node. We can call this variable tail or even rear. Let's call this variable rear for now and also the variable which storing an address of head as front. In any insertion or removal, we'll have to update both front and rear now. But from now on, whenever we will perform NQ operation, we can directly check where a rear node is and update its address to formulate a new insertion link. This simple addition of one pointer resolves our problem with the cost of insertion. Let's understand this scenario with the help of an example. Previously, we were traversing from head node to the tail node. But now, as we know the location of tail node, there is no need for any traversal. We can directly update the address part of rear node to make a link for new node. Here the new node with data element 7 will be linked to the previous node and the rear pointer will also be updated to point towards the newly inserted node. 
now the complexity for both the operation will be big of 1 which means we can now begin with the coding implementation of q using a linked list so let's dive directly into that in order to get started with our coding implementation we'll need to load some dependencies that are called as header files i have already included those header files here so first of all we'll declare a structure to create nodes for our linked list and inside this structure, we'll initialize data and address bar. So let's get started with creation of this structure. Struct node. Now the initialization of data and address bar. Int data. Struct node. Star. Next. Now, using this created structure, we will initialize front and rear pointers. So, let's create this front and rear pointer struct node star front is equal to null. Similarly, struct node star rear is equal to None. The declaration of variables that we have done here is in global scope. The reason behind that is to make sure that these variables will be accessible to all the functions. So moving forward, let's work out the primary queue operation. We'll start with nq operation. So let's create a function for that void nq. And inside this function, we'll pass an argument int x to insert a element. Now, inside the nq function, we'll take an integer as an argument. In this function, we'll create a new node for purpose of insertion. So let's create that new node, struct node star temp is equal to struct node star malloc size of struct node so with this size of function we have allotted the size of address part as well as the data part one more thing i want to tell you guys is i am using malloc in c here for dynamic memory allocation if you want to implement this code using C++, then you can use new operator instead of malloc. The purpose of using malloc here is to create a node in dynamic memory. Now, moving ahead, we can start working on two cases of NQ operation. Primarily, there won't be any element inside the queue. So for the first insertion, we'll manually set both front and rear to the address of this newly created node. So to do that, first we'll have to create a if condition, if front is equal to equal to null and and rear is equal to equal to null, front is equal to rear is equal to temp which is nothing but the new created pointer variable and will return the control. If this condition fails, that means there are already some elements present inside our queue. So using else condition, we can write another statements rear dot next is equal to temp and rear is equal to 10. Basically, these two lines of code are just updating the address part of the next node along with setting the temporary data into rear nodes data field. This code will be further clear if I'll show things moving in simulation. So let's revisit PowerPoint for that purpose. Let's say initially we have an empty queue. So both front and rear will be null. Null is only a macro for address 0. At this stage, let's say we are making a call to nq function passing number 2 as an argument. 
Now let's go through the NQ function and see what will happen. First, we'll create a node. The data part of this node will be set as 2 and the address part will initially set as null. Let's say we got this node at address 100. So a variable named temp will store this address. Right now, the front and rear both are null. So we'll go inside this if condition and simply set both front and rear as 100. After the first NQ operation, our queue will look like this. Let's say we are making another call to NQ function at this stage, passing number 4 as an argument. Once again, a new node will be created. Let's say I got this new node at address 200. This time, the queue is not empty. So in this function, we'll first go to the statement rear.next is equal to temp. So we'll set the next part of this node at address 100 as the address of a newly created node which is 200. So we'll build this link now. And now we'll store the address of this new rear node in this variable named rear. So this is how my queue will look like after the second NQ operation. I hope that you guys are clear with the implementation of NQ operation and the working of its code. Let's deal with the next queue operation named as DQ in our code editor. Now inside this DQ function, I'll create a temporary pointer to the node in which I'll store the address of the current front or head node so that we can directly delete it. So the statement I'll write for that is struct node star temp is equal to front. Now the first condition that we'll write in this DQ function is underflow error. So let's begin with if block f front is equal to equal to null print f q is in empty state slash n and return the control to the next function. Otherwise, in next case, when both front and rear will be equal, we'll set both these pointers to the null manually. So to do that, we'll insert another if block, if front is equal to equal to rear, front is equal to rear is equal to null. This if block will get activated when there is only one element inside the queue. In all other cases, we can simply make a front point to the next node. So we'll simply do a front is equal to front dot next. So for that, we'll write else block else front is equal to front dot next. In all three previous mentioned cases, we are trying to remove elements and that can only be done by implicit call of function free. So let's call function free to delete the front node from our queue. So the statement that we'll write is front free the temporary variable which is actually storing the head node address. Next, we'll work on peak operation and for that we'll create a new function int peak Basically, the peak function is used to extract a value of print pointer. For print pointer, we will simply check if the queue is empty. If it is empty, then obviously there is no element at front node to extract. But if it is not empty, then we can extract a value from front pointer. So for that, we'll create a if block if front is equal to equal to null, which also means the queue is empty. Then we'll return printf queue. is empty slash n otherwise we will return the data present at front node
Now we have implemented all important queue functionalities, but we won't be able to check the state of queue with the help of these functions. So let's formulate one more function called as print to visualize our queue. So let's define this function void print inside this function will create a temporary pointer struct node star temp is equal to front we are initializing this temporary pointer to the front so that we can traverse the whole queue elements using iterator element so moving forward let's create this iterator element using a while block so the statement that we'll write for that is while temp is not equal to null printf modulus d comma temp dot data And we will set temp is equal to temp dot next. This is nothing but the traversal of link list. Now we will also print f slash n so that all elements will be printed in order. With this, we have completed the implementation of print function as well. Now, let's work on our driver method called as main function to contemplate the output of our program. Inside this, we'll make call to the nq function, nq to, and we will print the state of our queue using print function. Next, we'll make call nq for and we will also print this state using print function next we will make call to nq6 and we will also print the state of our queue at this instance now after this we will dequeue few elements dequeue and we will print the state Next, we will enqueue one more element, enqueue 8. Now that we are done with the coding implementation of queue using linked list, let's execute the program and visualize the output. This is the output that we have received. Let's compare it with the calls that we have made in order to judge its correctness. The first call that we made was nq2. So the print function has printed 2 over here. After that, we inserted element 4 and 6. And our print function has printed the state after these operations as well. Next, we deleted the element present at front pointer, which is 2. So after deleting 2, the output that we got is 4 and 6. Finally, we inserted one more element to check if it is getting inserted at the rear end. And that element was 8, which is exactly inserted at the rear end of Q. So with this coding implementation, we come to the end of this video. I hope you guys are clear with the Q implementation using linked list. But if you still have any queries regarding the topics covered in this video, then let us know in comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned to simply learn for more technical videos.
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.